Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. If you look at relationships today, they're not real. There's not many real, raw, genuine, get up in your grill type of relationships where you can honestly be transparent and then talk about the real stuff. There really isn't that anymore. There's a lot of shallow, superficial, you know, wannabe relationships that have no depth. There's a lot of surface, but there's no depth. And it's so hard nowadays to find those kind of people that you want to be able to connect with and not just connect with, but actually be open with and honest with and be able to say, hey, look, look inside me. This is what's really going on. And to have this kind of relationship that helps you grow. And, and so I, I want to talk about this because, you know, relationships are key. You know, it, it's not just about having real and, and raw and genuine and authentic relationships, but it's also realizing that, you know what, I have a job to also make sure that I'm stewarding the kind of friend I am as well. Because many times we can talk about the friends we want, but what about the friend you are, right? What about the friend you are? And so I just want to lay a quick little foundation just on relationships. You know what, when, when you think about this word relationship, it basically means that, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm having fellowship with a group of people. And there's a famous statement, and the reason I wanted to talk on stewardship of relationship is because there's a famous statement that we've all heard. And it says, show me your friends, and I will show you your future. Have you guys ever heard that before? Show me your friends, and I will will show you your future. And so here's the truth. If you really want to find out about someone, just check, take a look at their friends. You can learn a lot about a person by just seeing who they spend most of their time with. If you really want to find out what a person be like, go and talk to their friends that they constantly spend time with. And you'll realize that, you know what, it makes total sense because you know what, most of the people that, that, that connect, like there's a few people here in our church, like, we know they're BFFs, and, and, and it's almost like not only are they best of friends, but they kind of look like each other, and, and they finish their sentences. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever met people like that? It's like they finish their sentences, and they're just like, oh, my God. And then you think they're sisters, but they're not, right? Have you ever seen those people? And that's because there's this intimacy that they've created, this bond that they've made that when you see that person, you're like, oh, I totally get it. I know why they're best friends. It's like talking to you is like talking to her, etc. And so... Um, you show me your friends, and I can show you your future. And I want you to understand that relationships is not something that, that we all created on earth. Like, no one had this brilliant idea to say, hey, you know what? How about we just start creating these clubs where we can just all become friends? No, it was God's big idea. Since the very beginning, God had the big idea of wanting relationship. As a matter of fact, God created us for the purpose of relationship. You think about Adam. Adam is, is created by God. He's the first man on earth, and Adam is working for God, and, and he's naming animals, and he's, he's, got, he's looking at all these different beasts of the earth, and, and Adam's like, man, none of these people look like me. And, and all of a sudden, you know what? Adam kind of felt like, man, I'm misplaced. I, I don't feel like I fit anywhere. And then we know God's famous words, and God said, he said, it is not good for man to be what? Alone. If you... If you have our Elevate Church app, I encourage you to open it. My notes are there, and we're going to do some fill-ins today, okay? But God said, it is not good. Everybody say, it's not good. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. And so God knew that, you know what, if man spends too much time alone, he can really become, you know, a chaos. He can fall into depression. He can... You know, isolation is, is an open door for oppression and depression, et cetera, et cetera, because you know what? God created us to feel a connection with people. God created us to feel a sense of belonging with people, not just feel like I can just do life by myself and everything will be all right. No, God created us for the purpose of relationship. And then we know that he created Eve for him, right? But I want you to know something, that when, when I say, uh, uh, and God said, it is not good for man to be alone. It, that, that's not just talking about marriage. This is whether you're married or not. You, 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 you all need godly friendships. Everybody say godly friendships. So that's what I want to talk to you about because you know what? 
anybody can have friends, but not everybody has godly ones. And so I'm not talking about, hey, you know what, let's, let's be a, 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 a special club, a Christian club where only we get to hang out. No, that's not what I'm saying, but because Jesus said, hey, you know what, I, I want you to love the sinner, right? We hate the sin, but we love the sinner. So we go out and we reach people that are far away from God and we bring them closer to Jesus and hopefully they find a relationship and they connect with God. What I'm talking to you about today is you as the believer, you as the person that is inviting people into your life. You have to make sure that you don't just allow anyone in what I call your circle of influence. Everybody say circle. See, because every single one of us have a circle that we have to protect, and that is your circle. This is you. This is where you are, and this is your circle. Not everybody should qualify to enter into your life. Not everybody. There has to be a qualification of who can enter your circle of influence. Everybody say influence. And listen, it's important because the people that you and I are spending our time with, they have influence, and I'm not just talking about anybody because many of us can claim that we know all kinds of people. Some of you can claim, oh, yeah, well, you know what, I got, I got 1,400 friends, and, yeah, they're on Facebook probably, and you probably didn't even know them, and you just friended everybody. You know, but, but everyone has acquaintances, right? But then what we're talking about is that circle of influence is who are you letting in the circle and hopefully you're being a good steward of it because who you're letting into the circle is influencing the decisions you're making, is influencing the choices you're making, is influencing anything it is that you're doing right now in life. It's the circle of influence. And you have to protect that circle because not everybody belongs there. It shouldn't belong there. Now watch this. So this is something that God wants us to steward in life. And I remember he loves the sinner. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying, hey, keep everybody out. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about the people that you let in your circle, the people that, that are intimate with you in the sense of, like, helping you with counsel, people that can speak freely into your life, people that can, get, that can really just tell you the truth because there's enough, there's enough history between both of us that we can talk real and raw. And not just try to be pretentious like, hey, everything's okay. No, not everything's okay. But not everybody qualifies to hear my stuff. And not everybody qualifies to hear your stuff either. And so it's so important. Now watch this. Look at this. In Proverbs 27, 19, it says, a mirror reflects a man's face. And so that is a truth, right? All of us looked ourselves in the mirror this morning. Or most of us probably. You know what? Whether you did your makeup, ladies... Or guys, you combed your hair, hopefully, you know, and hopefully everybody brushed their teeth. We all look at ourselves in the mirror. And so here the scripture says, hey, listen, it river reflects a man's face. That is true. Nothing can change that. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you are who you look like, what you, what you look like, right? But he goes on to say, but what he is really like, okay, so there's what you look at and there is what you're really like. Everybody say really like. So, hey, listen, you can look at a person and be like, okay, they're that. But what they're really like is a whole other level. You can look at yourself and you're like, man, I'm just so kind. Yeah, but what you're really like is something else. And so he says, and so, but what he is really like is shown by the kind of what? You are what you eat. You are like the people you spend time with. You are like the people that you choose to be your friend. I mean, think about it. The gentleman who's been hooked on drugs all his life, you know who he was hanging with before he was hooked on drugs? People and friends that were doing drugs. You know, people that have been in prison, you know who they were hanging out with? People that committed crimes. You know, people that were in gangs, Okay, I was a gang member when I was a young kid. Okay, I grew up in the neighborhood. Guess what? I started having friends with gang members, and then eventually, guess what I became? A gang member. It makes, it makes total sense. My mom looked at her cute little son, oh, my Mauricio. But what I was really like was the friends I chose. And so that also goes for you. Listen, 
You don't have to be in gangs. You don't have to, you know, be a criminal. You don't have to be on drugs to be completely going off the wrong direction. You could be someone that has it all together. You got a house, a job, a career, a family, and you know what? But inside of you, there are some other issues that you haven't addressed. But you really look like your friends, attitudes that you may have. Mindsets that you've created because of the people you've spent your time with. Things that you would never say. And now all of a sudden, now you're just saying things that you, you, you never, I, have you ever met someone like, man, I've never, you never used to talk like that. You think they learned that on their own? No, they learned that by the people they chose to make their friends. Got to guard the circle of influence. If you don't protect that circle, you're going to get yourself in all kinds of trouble. So he says, but what he is really like is shown by the kind of friends he chooses. So listen, God is all about relationships. He wants us to thrive and not survive in relationships. He wants us to enjoy our relationships, but there's also a sense of stewardship that we have to steward not only the friends we bring in, but also you got to steward the kind of friend you're going to be for someone else because right now you have the force of, of changing the direction of the people that supposedly call you friend. And hopefully you are forcing them into the right direction and not forcing them into the wrong direction that's leading them to destruction. And so we got to choose the right people in our life. And people should choose the right friends as well. And once again, so God loves this. As a matter of fact, Jesus, you know, he had three best friends. He had three, three great men that he brought in the circle. We know his name, names were Peter, James, and John, right? And I love about, the thing I love about Jesus is that he kept it real with his guys. They saw everything. They saw him, you know, be transfigured on the Mount of Olives. I mean, they, they got to see some stuff, man. I mean, it was like, like, Things that no other disciple saw that Jesus gave them permission to see. You want to talk about like circle of influence? They saw some stuff with Jesus. But there was a time where Jesus is uh, telling Peter, hey, Peter, here's what's going to happen. You know what? I'm going to be betrayed and, and I'm going to be taken and I'm going to be, you know what, uh, whipped and, and, and beat and put on a cross. But it's for the salvation of this world. And, and so Peter's listening, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you know what, what Peter has? Peter has this audacity to say, Jesus, you know what, we are friends, man. I love you. And guess what, man, I will follow you unto your death. <laughs> and Jesus was like, no, 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 Peter. Actually, you know what's going to happen? Uh, when the rooster crows the third time, you would have denied me. And, and, and so we know the story. And Peter was like, no, I'll never deny you. I'll always be there for you. I'll never turn my back on you. And he was the first one to turn his back on him. He denied him three times. But you know what's awesome is that beyond Peter's denial, we know Peter's end. Peter was truly a friend of God because at the end of the day, we know that Peter was restored back into ministry and he truly loved God. And we know that he ends up winning 3,000 people to Christ in one service. And then from there, he just preaches the gospel. And eventually, Peter gives his life for you and I to have this Bible that we get to carry in our hands today. That is awesome. But... Jesus was very transparent. Another time, Peter, James, and John, they're walking down the road. Jesus is walking ahead of them. And you know what they start talking about? Hey, you know what? Who's going to be the greatest in heaven? They start talking. I mean, they start boasting about who's better than them. Like they start probably sizing up how many demons this guy cast out and how many, you know, people this person's raised from the dead. They're probably measuring how, how awesome they were in ministry. And Jesus is hearing these three guys who are in his circle talk all this craziness and Jesus stops and turns around and says hey hey he's like here's the deal you're all going to be last he says because the first will be last but the last will be what first and so we need that kind of relationship we need those kind of relationships that really catch you when you're off and someone that can tell you hey listen get it together man what are you doing hey listen why are you thinking that way? Why are you acting that way? Where's your passion? You need people to get around you that you trust, right, enough with your life that have the best benefit for you. You have to have those kind of friends. If not, you're looking just like the ones you're spending most of your time with right now. There should be that authenticity in our friendships. There should be that strength in our friendships. And so here you have Jesus is constantly showing this is how you develop quality friends here's the deal developing quality friendships okay is what god did but you know how he did it he did them intentionally 
and not by accident. He did them intentionally. There should be quality. Okay, quality. Many have quantity of friends, but they don't have quality friends. Friends that fear God. Friends that love God. Friends that pursue God. Friends that worship God. Friends that honor God. Friends that are more afraid of God than to not tell you the truth. Friends that will stand up for you when no one else will stand. Friends that will speak up for you when everyone else will keep their mouth shut. I'm talking about real and raw friends. Friends that, that, that want to be there for you at your worst, but also at your best. Friends that will constantly build you up and not tear you down. If you have those kind of people around your life, that's what you look like. And it's scriptural, right? It's true, if you think about it. And so, if you guys can put up my point, developing quality friends is intentional, not accidental. Developing quality friends is intentional. I don't know what's up with these guys. Is it up there or not? Okay, they'll, they'll get you guys right now. Look at 1 John verse 4, chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Watch this. It says, dear friends, and I love this because this is John. This is one of the disciples that were in the circle of Jesus. He's now here writing the books, you know, Big John, and then there's 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Here's John, and he starts talking to the church because obviously there was, a, there was a, a problem in the church. There was so much drama with people. And look what he says. He says, dear friends, let us love one another. Everybody say, love one another. He says, let us love one another for love comes from who? From God. And so he says, okay, let's, let's love each other because love comes from God. And he says, for love comes from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and what? Knows God. And he says, and whoever does not love does not know God. And so that's a, that's, that's a very confronting type of letter to the church. Like, hey, listen, here's, here's the bottom line. Whoever doesn't love, man, you don't even know God. In other words, man, we got to be the most loving people. You know what, John, if you keep reading in, in 2 John, 3 John, here's what, here's what he says. John says, you know what, and this is how the world will know my God. This is how the world will know my Jesus, by the way you love one another. But haven't you noticed there's so much drama and so much trauma in the church. And so we wonder why people stay far away from God. Well, I, I'll tell you, it's not that people have a problem with God. It's that people have a problem with Christians. Because Christians don't know how to love one another. And so he's saying, hey, listen, if you, don't, if you don't love one another, the love of God is not in you. That's a confrontation. John, John's like, man, I learned this from Jesus. Because, man, anytime we had cray-cray, man, Jesus just boom in our face. Why? Because he loved us enough to tell us the truth. And so he goes on to say, this is how, everybody say, this is how. Come on, this is where that song came out. This is how we do it. Remember that song? Y'all remember that jam? No? Okay. Whatever. This is how God showed his love among us. Now check this out. This is how, in other words, God's saying, hey, listen, this is how you do love. This is how you do. He said, I sent, he sent his one and only son into the world that he might live, that we might live through him. And then he says, so this is how and this is love. Not that we love God. And this is awesome. I love this. So, not that we love God. In other words, no one here in this room, no one in this world can take the credit for starting this awesome relationship with God. Nobody. In other words, God was the first one who went with intentionality to say, you know what? I want them. And so we're far away from God. We're so lost in our sin. It's kind of like this. The whole world was hanging out at Satan's bar and grill. And everybody was just tearing it up, just tearing it up. Satan, you know, Satan just kept saying, yeah, man, here, have another, have another, have another. And everyone's just tore up. Everyone is just obese with all kinds of stuff that literally is just weighing our life down. And then guess what? <laughs> but little did all the people know that the bill was coming soon, but nobody had currency to pay for it. And then God looked down and he saw all of us. And he saw how, how deceiving and how... How, how much of a lying thief Satan was. I mean, think about it. 
We're talking about God, God who also understands the, 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 the idea of conflict and relationship. God was, was, was someone who loved Lucifer at one point who was a fallen angel and then becomes Satan. Satan thinks that he can do things better. And then he, he, he has this, this audacity because God gave him influence. And then he begins to influence a third of the angels. And it's almost like this, like Satan decides one day to say, hey, Hey, guys, he gets all the angels in a room, a third of them. And he says, hey, guys, here's the deal. You know what? <laughs> you know, our God, he's good and everything, but I'll be greater than him. See, he started boasting about himself. You see, you know you have the wrong friend when they boast about themselves or they always talk about themselves. And he starts boasting, and you know what I can do? And, and you know what I can give you? And you know what I can be? And so he just talks, I, 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 I. And these angels are listening to this influence that this man has. And they all just start saying, okay, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. And then you know what happens? This guy is trying to bring people out of God's house. And then all of a sudden, he's able to trick a third of the angels. And they go with him. It's almost like God wakes up on Sunday morning and he goes and he looks at his heaven Facebook and all of a sudden he's defriended by a third of the angels on his Facebook. They're no longer following him. Have you ever woken up and then all of a sudden have like five people stop following on Instagram or Facebook and you're just hurting like why did they defriend me? A third of the angels. Can you imagine what church was like that weekend? A third missing from the congregation. A third of the choir is no longer there because one man decides that he can do it better. And you know what God did? God handles conflict very good. You know how he handled it? He said, okay, fool, you want to do evil? I'll show you evil. And he went ahead and he kicked him in the butt and left his heavenly footprint right on his butt. And we know Satan was then went from Lucifer to Satan. And now we know that his end is being in the pit of hell for eternity, and he'll never, ever come out of that place again. But guess what? But because of sin coming into this earth, we were then separated from God. We no longer had this relationship with God. And then God looked down, and he said, I love them too much because he started seeing us be in this Satan bar and grill and already being so uh, obsessed and, and obese with sin and stuff. And then God said, for God so loved the world that he sent and he sends his son Jesus. And Jesus walks into that Satan bar and grill. And you know what? Yeah, the devil got the first Adam, Adam and Eve, but he couldn't get the second Adam, Jesus. And he walks in and he says, let me see the bill. And he shows him the bill. He says, ha, 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 ha. These aren't going to get away. But Jesus says, no, ha, 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 ha. It is paid in full, and we know that it was through the shed blood of Jesus, and it was through that rugged cross that Jesus was broken and busted for you and me so that we can be forgiven of every single sin. And then he brought the full payment, and he said, you know what? They don't have to pay for this. My father has paid for this. They are free because who the son sets free is free indeed. Can we give Jesus a big hand clap and say, thank you, Lord, for paying for that. That, my friend, is a friend. That is a friend who is willing to pay for you when you don't deserve it. When you are the one who got in debt and he's yet still willing to take care of you. That is a friend. I'm not talking about friends. I'm talking about godly ones. The ones that want to see you grow. There's too many people going through life right now. But not many are growing through life. You're not growing. Now, you are growing, but you're either growing for the wrong stuff or you're growing in the good stuff. You might as well be intentional and say, I'm going to grow with the good stuff. Because you're already going anyway. So I might, as be, I might as well be going and growing with the right people. And so let's finish reading. So this is the love. He says, not that, all, not, that, not that we love God first. So God said, hey, look, I started out by reaching out to you. You didn't have to come looking for me. God's like, I pursued you. He said, I went out of my way for you. How do you not go out of your way for the one who went out of his way to come get you? And he says, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And he says, dear friends, since God so loved us, man, we all sought to love one another, huh? What a bright idea. Man, shouldn't we just be loving each other? And he goes on to say, he says, no one has ever seen God but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made perfect in us or complete in us. 
And I so love this verse. I love it. And then John 15, 15, this is where Jesus, he comes and he puts the spank on the devil once again. And he says, you're not going to have my kids anymore. No, you're not going to have. He's like, look, look what he says. He says, I no longer call you. And in John 15, 15, he says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master's business is. He says, but instead I have called you what? He called you what? So the kind of people that we want in this circle should be the kind of people that God wants for us and the kind of people that we need to be as well for others. And that is a godly friend. Godly. It's time to take, I know you're not going to like this, but I'm going to do it. Let's just lock the doors. It's time to take friend inventory. There's inventory, then there's friend inventory. And friend inventory is basically you looking at all the people that you're doing life with, the people that you're going through life with, and start asking yourself, okay, you know what? What is this person adding to my life? For example, you know, yesterday I, 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 we, we had our coffee with us and we met with new people from our church. It was awesome. And after that, I went to go hang out with uh, Jessica and Anthony Stamps. And, and as we were sitting down having coffee and, 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 and food and just relaxing. And you know what? It was so encouraging to be able to sit with people that are in my circle that are, are, are not only going through life with me, but they're growing through life together with me where we can talk about things that are awesome, where we bring encouragement to each other. We bring empowerment. We bring vision. We, we stir the gifts that are within both of us. And so there's like this reciprocal, okay, I just pour into them, they pour into me. I pour into them, they pour into me. And it's this constant thing. And then you know what? When you get done with being with people like that, you walk out like 10 feet taller. And you're just like, yeah, let's go take this thing, man. Let's go do it. But then there's that other kind of people. The other kind of people that you get with, and God bless them, but it can be the kind of people where, like, it's like you talk to them and you come in and you're just like, hey, how, how's it going, man? Are things and, and it's like, no, life sucks, man. Nobody really cares about me. You know what? I, nothing good ever happens for me. And it's this constant negativity that there's no life in. It's almost like they just, they're just sent to suck the life out of you. Now, now let me say this. Does God love everybody? Yes, he loves everybody. He even loves the life suckers. He does. He loves them. They need change too, but guess what? But the question is, are you the life sucker? And who's sucking the life out of you? Because you know what? The people that come in your inner circle should be building you up, not tearing you down. Building you up, not tearing you down. Building you up, not tearing you down. If you feel worse than before you sat with those people, those are the wrong friends. <laughs> If you walked away hearing something that, that doesn't even connect with God's word, like if you're getting counsel from someone and it doesn't come from God himself, I mean, think about it. The Bible, it has all kinds of things. You know, if you need steward, how to, how to steward relationships, Bible. Steward finances, Bible. Steward marriage, Bible. Steward health, Bible. Steward anything. It's in the Bible. All of it. God is so awesome that he said, hey, you know what? I'm going to give them a life book. And this life book called the Bible, right, it's the basic instruction before leaving earth, B-I-B-L-E. He said, man, if I can just get this in their hand. And then all kinds of amazing men and women who are willing to sacrifice their life to be a friend to you and I called Jesus' disciples gave their life for us to have the Bible that we carry in our hands today. And so think about it. That's the kind of friends we need to have in our life, friends that can speak truth into our life and not just tell you what you want to hear. You need people to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. You want to hear you're awesome. But really what you need to hear is like, man, you're negative. Have you ever asked a friend that question? I double dog dare you. The one that tells you, you know what, you're, you are kind of negative. That's your friend. Keep him right there. But that's the one that we immediately cut off. Like that jerk. Oh, my God. You you have no, there, there, someone had the guts to tell you the truth. The one that says, oh, my God, no, you're so cool. You're amazing. You're awesome. You're, oh, okay, you know what? Run from that friend. Because you know what? You can have a frijol in your teeth, and they won't tell you. <laughs> True story, embarrassing. There's a Sunday. Um, you know, my fly was down. 
and I had some leadership sitting here. And after so I'm like, hey, through the whole service, you know, your flag was, I'm like, and you didn't tell me? Oh, it's good. I'm like, you're not a friend. What's wrong with you? That's, I'm like, tell me, man, what's wrong with you? Crazy. Anyways, that, I don't know why I said that, but <laughs> that's that person where I was going to go check and see who they are. Everybody say friends. But here's the problem. I think, I think too many of us really don't think about this. I, I think because I, I think we focus too much on what is around us. Like, I think we put more emphasis on, oh, what's, what's my environment like? Like, okay, that, cool. You know, what, what's, what spa am I going to? What gym am I going? It's like we care more about what, what environment we're in instead of being a little bit more smarter and really caring about who is actually around you. See, it's not the what that's so important. It's the who is in your life that's more important than anything. Who's in your life? Let me read you a scripture. Look at this. Proverbs 13, 20. Look, I love this verse. It says, keep company with wise and you will become what? Okay, that was pretty, that was pretty solid right there. We can close the Bible right there and go home. But check this out. Keep company with the wise and you'll become wise. If you make friends, look at this. If you make friends with, I've always wanted to say this word in church. Ready? If you make friends with. Come on, you know you all say worse words than that. Let's say this together. One, two, three. If you make friends with, you will be, I wish it would have said stupid. That's how I would have ended it. But it says you'll be ruined. And so listen, this is, this is the wisest man on earth. He's like, listen, if, if you hang out with like wise people, you're going to get wiser, smarter. But if you hang out with stupid, stupid is what you become. And so how is it that, that we, we, we start investing our life with, with, you know what? Hey, listen, I think we've all been stupid at some point in life. You know, let me see all of my, you know, pre-stupid addicts. And just wave your hand. Yeah, we've all been there. We've all been stupid. And then we got delivered a stupid. And so here's what Solomon said. He's like, hey, listen, when you spend time with stupid people, you're going to ruin your life, man. But when you hang out with wise people, people are going to tell you the truth. People are going to bring you the word. People are going to bring you some true answers. Here's what happens. You get smarter. You get wiser. Look at the definition of stupid. I had to look this up. Stupid means this. A stupid person doesn't have much intelligence or imagination. And they go, they go what? I'm sorry. They go through what? They go through? Anybody know any stupid people? Okay, don't put your hands up. They may be sitting next to you. And they go through life making decisions that seem to lack all common sense. Have you ever met with people that just, it's like, stupid, dude. It's like, okay, dumb the first time. And then the second time, stupid. Just stupid. And then they do it again. Stu but how many of us, let's be honest. How many of us know people that constantly make decisions with no common sense through life and you keep rescuing them and you haven't learned your lesson. Can someone say stupid? And so you know what? The only thing that can deliver stupid is wisdom. That's the only thing that can deliver someone from stupid is wisdom. We need the wisdom of God. Now I'm not saying this. The word is saying this, right? Lacks all common sense. If you've got a brain, but you don't use it, you might be a bit stupid. I mean, think about it. God created everything of us. I don't know about you, but my God, he's intelligent. He's creative. He is awesome. Man, he's incredible. He's indescribable. And then God said, I made you just like me in my image, and you're just like me. Well, guess what? If you're not hanging with God, then you're not like him. Come on now. We can go there now. He gave us a brain. He created us and he said, you know what? I create you intelligent, smart, brilliant. Now know me. And so what happens? I think sometimes it's not even, it's not even lacking knowledge. It's lacking wisdom. Because if you're a true friend and they lack knowledge, then that's the wisdom you bring them. Or vice versa, they bring to you. Let's look at New King James, same version, same scripture, but I'm sorry, different version. It says, he who walks with wise, everybody say walks. Come on, you go through life, you walk with people. We're walking, stand with me. 
Come, walk with me, man. We walk and you know what I'm telling you, what's your name? Uh, listen, Oscar, if you hang out with me, man, we walk together in life, you can kind of, yeah, stay with me at pace, man. You're going to walk faster, that's for sure, if you walk with me. And, uh, and it says, look, he who walks with wise men will be what? Wise, man. And so we, we hang out some uh, and we start, you know, spending some time together. I promise you, you know, I don't know how much of God you know, man. I mean, you could have always been growing up in the church, but I tell you this much, man. You hang out with me, you're going to learn about God, you're going to love God, you're going to be passionate about God because you know what? When I hang out with God, man, my life gets changed. So that means if I get changed, you get changed. And nothing's ever the same. And so we spend some time, you'll talk different, you'll look different. Man, you'll, you'll, you'll start being passionate and you'll start preaching the word of God if, if we hang out. You know what I'm saying? Have a seat. Thank you. So if you walk with wise, wise is what you become. But the companion of fools will be what? So who are you walking with? Once again, it doesn't have to be someone walking in, in some deep drug addiction or, you know, some deep sin. Man, you can be walking with just people that just have no, no common sense of, like, what's right with God. God will never, never, listen, when I, when I talk about godly people, it's talking about godly people who have a fear of God, a reverence for God, godly people who worship God, godly people who serve God, godly people who trust God, who believe God. That's what I'm talking about. And not everybody qualifies for that. But that is your job to steward that. Are you with me today? Because what's happening right now is that the people that you and I are choosing are really, they're the ones that are, that are, literally shaping where we're going now watch this here's some points you're either going number one you're either going nowhere ever say nowhere so you're either going nowhere right now which pretty pretty much sucks have you ever met someone and 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 you became friends and then like you know 10 years later you're still hanging out together and you're still seeing them but they're going nowhere in life it's like hey man so what's new nothing um man how's work Sucks. Um, hey, uh, <laughs> anything exciting happening? No. Hey, have you have you seen anything? No. I I don't go no. And it's like it's like you look at them five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years later, and they're going nowhere. Nowhere. Number two. When you're going with people, you're either going nowhere or you're number two, you're going everywhere. <laughs> Everybody say everywhere. The people that go everywhere are the people that have no divine focus from heaven. You're just everywhere. You got like 10 things God called me to do. It's like, it's like a pipeline dream. Like, yeah, I'm called to do this and this. And, and you're just like, shh, shh, shh. you're going everywhere and you're getting nowhere. And I have friends like that, intelligent, smart people, but not really because obviously 10 years later, they're still doing five different things. I'm like, man, you know what? Let me tell you something. When you discover God in your relationship or when he discovered you and you actually respond, God helps you discover your divine purpose on planet earth. God does not waste time. God did not make a mistake creating you. He created you with a purpose on earth. The question is, is when will you hang close enough with him to find out what that is? And when people tell me, I've been a Christian for 10 years, I'm like, yeah, but what kind, what kind of Christian have you been for 10 years? Because the title doesn't count. What you live is what counts. Yeah? And anything that has to do with God, when it comes to your profession, Jesus better be in it. In anything you do. I don't care if you flip burgers. Man, you make sure that Jesus is in that flipping burger with you right there because you need him. And he'll favor you. God has a divine purpose for you. So listen, if you're just going everywhere, you're going nowhere. And in life, number three, I hope that you're really wanting to go somewhere. You see, when you have the right people in your life, you have a final destination. All the people that are in my inner circle, they are all living out their God call. And we are all going somewhere. And we are all making it to our final destination. But the question is, are you? Are you with me? I know this is a little bit hard, but hey, as your pastor, I'm going to tell you the truth. 
I got to tell you this truth. Okay, so what do I ask myself? Number one, here, ask yourself these questions when you go home as you're ch- talking about your friends. Okay, number one, who am I connected with? Who am I connected with right now? Take a friend inventory and say, okay, who am I connected with right now? You know, because uh, hopefully that, that the, the, those that are in your circle of influence that help make decisions with you in life, hopefully you got the right ones. So who are you connected with? It may be time to change some friends, guys. Now, does that mean that we're, you know, like breaking up with them? Like, hey, sorry, man, we're no longer going to hang out together. No, it just means that you have to come to that place of revelation and say, you know what? This person or these people, I think this is as far as I can go with them. It's time to start bringing the right people because I need to know that I'm going somewhere in life and not just going everywhere in life or nowhere in life. And so you start making a change. Okay, number two. So number one is who am I connected with right now? Because you're all connected with somebody. Okay, whether it's connected with someone where you're growing or dying. Okay, there's only two things you do with God. You either grow with God or you die. That's it, nothing else. Number two, who are they connected with? Who are they connected with? Be careful because here's the deal. You know what, who people are connected with, you're associated to. Whether you like it or not. Okay, and that's, that's, that's easy to do nowadays. You know that even employers are getting sm- smarter. You know what they do before they hire people? When you turn in an application, the first thing they do now in employment is they go and they check your social media and they see who the heck are you following and what are you posting. You know why? Because they know that the moment they go to your social media, they can actually read your character. If you're a wild one (laughs) or if you're a consistent one, a stable one, or if you're just like, "Eh." so they literally take now social media and they start checking all of your friendships and they analyze it and they assess and they say, this is the kind of person she is. This is the kind of guy that he is. Just by your association of friends. It's pretty smart. I'd encourage you to go do that with your friends right now. Go check and see who they're following. Because you're associated as well. In my social media, if I find anybody that I'm following that's my friends, and I see anything that doesn't line up with what I believe, cut. I defriend. I don't do it. It ain't going to happen. That junk's not going to be on my stuff. Not going to happen. Go to my social media right now. You know what? You always get these, sometimes these weirdos that try to even befriend you. They're all like half naked and everything. They're like, uh-uh, it ain't happening here. No. Can you imagine, hey, let's go check out Pastor Marie. She's got all these like half naked people. No. Not going to happen. We're like, what the? Hey, what in the? What are you doing, man? <laughs> and she befriended me. No. No. So you have to, you have to guard it with all your life. Because if you don't, listen, we become stupid and we go into our own destruction. Can't do that. Number three, where are they going? And where are the people you hang with? Where are they going? Are they doing the same thing every weekend? Party, drink, work, sleep, wake up, work, do everything the same thing, and then, go, and then the same weekend? What are they doing? Like, where, where are they going? Because where they're going is probably where you're going. Nowhere. Or? They're probably people that are solid, focused. You know what? I talk to our staff, and our staff work hard here. Our leaders, they work hard. Our, all of our team work hard. And you know what? We're talking on weekend. We're like, man, you know what? People get weird. They're like, why are you at church all the time? It's like, that's because we're going somewhere, bro. That's why. See, it doesn't matter to us. But people that, that church bothers them, it's because you're not going the same direction we're going. See, we're going true north while others are just like, why? We're going somewhere while others are like, why can't we just go everywhere? Because we're not going to go everywhere. We're going somewhere. And we're going to go somewhere with Jesus. Amen? But not everybody's like that. That's okay. That's okay. That's not for everybody. But it's definitely for me. So just know, where are they going? Where are they going? Because as you keep coming here, you're going to change. But the question is this, which one are you? What kind of friend are you? Let me give you the final verse here. Because here is the description. Here's the definition of what a true friend looks like. Are you ready? This is the true definition. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 through 8. It says this. It says, love is patient. So you want to know what kind of friend you want to be? You got to be patient. It says love is kind. You have to be a kind person. It does not envy. In other words, you can't have friends around you or you can't be the kind of friend that you don't know how to celebrate people when good things are happening for them. It does not boast. 
It's not always just kind of like boastful, like I'm better than everybody. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. And how many of those people do we have today in society? Very, very just self-centered. It's all about me. Self-seeking, that is not a great quality of a friend. But is that, is that your quality? It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. How many of us have big old filing cabinets where we just bust it out and we bring out that one record of that person that jacked me up like last year around this time and this is about the season that it happened, right? Love says, I forgive you. And when I forgive you, I get rid of the record. It holds no records. We're talking about the character of God's love. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. In other words, I'm not going to be hanging with people that don't, that don't love God. Just, it's, I'm talking about intimacy. I'm talking about my friendships. If you don't fear God, I mean, you're basically asking me, choose me or choose God. I choose God, man. I choose him over you. We don't rejoice in evil. We rejoice in good. It always protects. I love that one. You know, a true friend, Oscar, protects you. No one will ever sit in my presence and talk about my friends. I've heard people say this. You know, Pastor, they were talking. They were saying X, Y, Z. I'm like, and what would you say? Nothing. I didn't say nothing. I'm out of that one. I'm like, see, you're not a friend. <laughs> because if you were a friend, you would have stood up for me and protected me. Because a true friend protects you even from your own friends. When someone's talking, let me encourage you. This is what you do. Oh, hey, and let's just say Frank. Frank is the nicest guy in church here. Oh, my God. This guy doesn't talk about anybody. He barely talks about himself. No, but let's just say Frank. Let's just him because you know what? He's just so darn nice and kind and love. <laughs> let's say Frank. Frank starts talking smack, right? Like, you know, man, that Oscar. Man, I'll tell you that. And just starts talking smack, right? Oscar's the new guy, right? And so, you know what? A friend that protects says, oh, really? And you, and you don't just listen. You say, oh, really? Okay, you know what, uh, Frank? Dude, I'm glad that you were bold enough to tell me about Oscar. Now let me just go grab Oscar. Oscar, come here. <laughs> come here, Oscar. Hey, Frank has something to tell you, man. <laughs> hey, what were you telling me, man? <laughs> Dude, no, hold on. What were you saying? Uh, he, was, he, he was just like, were your ears flaring? Because he was just talking about, yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so tell him, Frank, what did you have to say? And so forth, right? Have a seat. I'm telling you, listen. Love protects. You protect. You can't call me a friend and you don't protect me. It's just not going to happen. Look, it always trusts. Now, we've all been betrayed. Has anyone ever been betrayed here? You know what's hard is to trust again when you've been betrayed by the people you love. But you know what? Here's what I'm going to tell you. Don't trust them again. Trust God with them. And you put your trust in God, and then God heals your heart and protects you from being hurt again. It always hopes. Come on, do you hope the best for your friends, or are you hopeless about your friends? Always perseveres. In other words, man, I can be weathering any storm in life, but you're going to persevere with me. Mauricio, we're with you. Pastor, we're with you. You know what, Gilbert, I'm with you. Frank, I'm with you. Oscar, I'm with you. And so no matter what, we're going to persevere. I'm with you, Sandy. I'm with you. We're going to persevere while love perseveres. We don't quit when it gets hard, man. That's when we press all the more. And love, I love this. And he ends it with this. And love will never fail. Let's stand to our feet. Lift a hand to heaven and let's just, let's just pray this. I'll pray over you, Father. I thank you as we lift our hand. We're saying help us to be that kind of friend. A friend who loves. A friend who is kind. A friend who is patient. A friend who is long-suffering. Lord, we pray that we would be the kind of friend that perseveres and that protects. The kind of friend, Father, that, that goes above and beyond, that knows how to persevere in the good times but also in the bad times. Father, I thank you that as we so that kind of friendship into other people's lives, God, would you bring back those kind of friends into our life? Father, I thank you that you said that God will not be mocked. Whatever man sows that he will also reap. So, Father, help me reap some amazing friendships. 
And Lord, if I've done anything wrong to anyone, help me to go back and repent and apologize for my attitude. Help me to repent for not being as strong as a friend as I should have. And Lord, I thank you for helping me to be that wise man or woman that you're calling me to be as I hang with the right people. People that love you, people that fear you, people that, that worship you, people that serve you, people that completely have a reverence and respect for you, God. That's the kind of circle of friends I want to have. And so, Lord, I pray for that kind of peace and that kind of wisdom for everyone. You can put your hands down with that same attitude of prayer. If you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I'm here to offer you the greatest love relationship that you'll ever experience, and his name is Jesus. He wants to be your friend today. If you've never invited Jesus Christ into your heart, please do that today. You know what's beautiful about Jesus? He doesn't have any qualifications. You know why? Because he perfects you. He's the only one that can forgive you of your sins. There's no human being on earth that can forgive you for anything but God. Only God can. And so today, if you've never invited Christ into your life, today you can invite him and receive him and, and be friends with a Savior who loves you, who wants to rescue you, heal you, restore you. When I count to three, you're going to lift your hand. All day today, people have been lifting their hands, inviting Jesus, a great friend, into their life and receiving the greatest love and forgiveness. And so if that's you here today, when I count to three, you'll lift your hand up in the air. And then we'll all pray together as a church. This is your moment. This is your hour. Ready? If that's you and you're saying, yes, I want Jesus. I want this love, this friend in my life. I'm going to count to three and you'll lift your hand. One, you're not afraid. Come on. Two, come on. Love never fails. And love cast out all fear. If that's you today, lift your hand. Three, lift your hand high so I can see it. If you're invited, G, I see that hand. Anybody else? Anyone else? Lift your hand high so I can see that real quickly. It's awesome. I love that. Thank you. Let's pray this together. Everyone, especially the young lady that lifted her hand. Awesome. Pray this with me. Pray, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins, every one of them. Today, it's a brand new day, and I receive a new life in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for not giving up on me and for loving me the way you did today. Thank you, Lord. Thanks a million. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.